I'd like to start my presentation with a personal disclaimer, which may sound quite shocking. Okay, I come from Singapore, and my parents live five minutes walk away from the beach. And for the last twenty years, we have been driving to the beach,、um, not because we can, but because it's too hot and humid in Singapore, and it was for personal comfort. So at the end of this presentation, hopefully I will learn a lesson myself, and when I go back in August for holiday, I will start walking to the beach and hopefully reduce my、uh, carbon footprint. Okay. But I thought I start with that because I really got interested in sustainability from the fringes. Okay. My expertise is really into human resource management, into training skills and sort of、uh, competence development within the industry. But at the moment, I'm writing a book entitled "Constructing Futures," and the book started out in 2004 when I wanted to have lunch with leading figures in the UK construction industry. Okay, I just wanted to have lunch and talk to them about the life histories, and all they were concerned about was sustainability in the present. Okay, so I then thought I knew very little about sustainability. Let's go away and find out. Okay, now I start my journey from last week in London. And also in the hotel in Liverpool Street in Trouble Lodge, and I thought、um, I wanted a cup of coffee. So there was a Kenko coffee machine there, and you can't see the words Kenko really because it says "Delivering Sustainable Development" right in your face. Okay. Never mind the cup of coffee, which was rather bland.、Um, it was about delivering sustainable development. Um, and then, if you go to、uh, BP's website, they no longer market themselves as British Petroleum, okay? But they call themselves Beyond Petroleum, okay? Next week, local elections next week. The Conservative government、uh, votes blue, go green. So a lot of what I was thinking about was: Are we moving beyond just rhetoric、uh, and slogans? And what is this thing called sustainability? So I then decided to go away and read up on what sustainable development is, and I think、uh, Professor Bob Adams、uh, gave a very good introduction.、Uh, it means different things to different people. Okay, I like to start off with the framework provided by Professor David Pierce, who sadly died a few years ago. He was an economist,、uh, an ecological economist, I think,、uh, and. He's non corporate within construction, but he was asked by the industry a couple of years ago to start understanding sustainable development in construction. Okay, and he came up with this framework.、Uh, I'm not sure if you can see at the back, but basically it talks about four capitals. Okay, human capital, man-made capital, social capital, and natural capital. So I'm just going to go through each of these four capitals. To talk about what do we actually know about these? Okay. So the first thing, man-made capital. It is about economic performance, and at the moment, the only、uh, C word that you hear is credit crunch. Okay. So a lot of man-made capital、uh, is actually、um, about raising productivity and competitiveness, and trying to sustain jobs for the future. Here's what we know about construction.、Uh, quite a dated reference now, but for a very long time there has been this uh, big uh, problem apparently within construction of low productivity. This graph,、uh, taken from a book on construction productivity, suggests that construction underperforms manufacturing. Okay, and again there is this political rhetoric: we need three million homes in the UK. Uh, the world is suffering from an infrastructure shortage, and so on and so forth. Okay, hang on a minute. I found another reference by another guy called Professor Peter Barrett, who works for an international organisation, and he wrote a report a couple of years ago on revaluing construction. Guess what? Construction since 1970s have been outperforming manufacturing. So the question here. Is lies, damn lies, and statistics. Okay.、Uh, by the way, UK PLC, when they talk about productivity, always says we need to raise the game. 
and follow our American brothers and sisters. What do they do? They invest in ICT, information and communication technology, and they also go for automation and construction, robots building buildings. Okay? Hang on a minute. The Economist did a study a couple of years ago, and out of 10 industries, construction was the most uh, behind in terms of ICT adoption. So, I just want to raise this issue here. Do we actually know what the state of uh, magnet capital is? Okay, let's move on to human capital. This is actually from uh, Professor Gary Becker in the 60s, 1964, when he said we need to train so that we have more skills, and when we have more skills, people feel more productive and we have more work. Okay. Now, if you look at the stats, this is taken from the LEED report, uh, comparing OECD countries right across the board. And if you look at that, the UK is pretty average in terms of skills development, lagging behind a lot of our competitors, um, the US, uh, France, Germany, Netherlands. And yes, if you compare productivity across the board, the UK doesn't seem to be performing very well. So maybe Gary Becker was right when he says that skills gives you productivity. Hang on a minute. If that is so important, then why do we have a problem with lack of skills training? Um, again, I'm going to throw statistics at you, uh, but don't believe what I say. Apparently, in the construction industry in the UK, we only invest one day a year, on average, for training. Okay? So, again, there is a disconnection between the political rhetoric and actually what we do. Let's move on. Social capital. I'm going to show you a picture here. How many of you watched David Dimbleby's How We Made Britain, or How We Built Britain? On, in one of the episodes, he actually put forward Saltair in Yorkshire, which was by Sir Titus Salt. In the 19th century, he said, let's give proper accommodation to the workers. Why? Because they were dying at the age of 30. They had 20 people in a room uh, in their accommodation. So he decided to build schools. He decided to build um, uh, hospitals, um, libraries, etc., etc. Okay? In fact, he also got rid of pubs, okay? He actually made sure there were non-alcoholic pubs, so there were no problems with asbos or uh, binge drinking or what have you. Uh, he did not call this sustainable communities. Titus Salt never once said he was contributing to social capital, but he was doing it, maybe altruistically, but also for good business sense. By raising the age of the workforce, by giving them good accommodation, he could actually make more profits. Where are we here today? Look at this, the number of words that we have to define what sustainable communities is. And we talk about civic engagement. Um, I received a lot of letters in the post saying, can you come to the parish hall on a Tuesday night? We'll give you a coffee and a Kit Kat, and can you tell us what you really want in your village? Um, does anyone actually give a toss on that? Okay. Next, natural capital. What we hear today is about, okay, what we hear today is about, you know, saving for the future generation. Um, there is actually the difference between weak sustainability and strong sustainability. Weak sustainability suggests you're not wasting so much. Strong sustainability suggests you don't waste, but you also replenish the existing uh, natural environment. Okay, but never mind the future generation. Uh, we had a question over there about local concerns, about house prices. Okay, uh, we're not even wanting to give up our consumption habits um, um, because we just want to sustain them. Um, and there is not just this intergenerational gap, there is this also international gap between developing countries and the developed countries. I'm just going to conclude uh, um, very briefly uh, with some of the key observations. Let's see. Thank you. I think we do not know enough yet at the moment. From what I've been hearing and from what I've been reading, there seems to be a lot of emphasis on sustainability as a thing. It is not a thing. It is a journey in which the human race progresses and tries to understand along the way. 
Uh, this led to rubbish the stuff that uh, the practitioners are doing, Van Elliott uh, presented, and he may have done a good job in Dongtan in China. Let the practice uh, persevere and come up with the, the engineer, uh, that sort of ingenious uh, solutions. But at the same time, we need to do basic research to try to understand the situation better. Now, I said at the start I'm writing a book based on having lunch with some of the leading figures in the UK construction. These are some of the people that I sat down with. I'm not going to go through the names if you want. Uh, I can uh, share with you over a cup of coffee. Uh, just what they said to me. To be careful. If you open the newspapers the last couple of days, the only concern that people have is the 10p tax rebate. Okay? Um, and the whole issue here is that a lot of the industry is made up of small businesses, maybe employing 10 to 50 people at most, um, and a lot of them need to survive. I know architectural practices, by the way, there's only a husband and wife team. What do they do? They've got to pay their mortgage. Okay? Next. Connectedness with, between the industry and the community. We talked about, I think Ben talked about the Yorkshire Stone and sourcing local materials. Um, that's great. But we have a lot of examples here where you do a project in Bristol and you source everything uh, 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 not from Bristol but from Southampton. Uh, two weeks ago, we took our students down to Bertram Newton uh, to get them to build three structures. Uh, Bertram Newton is near Kingston. And our materials were sourced from Sheffield. Okay, I say nothing more. Okay, now the next thing. There is also a perception by industry that a lot of regulations are done unto them. Now that's not to say that industry is right. In fact, I think industry should engage in a discussion with regulators and government. But it just shows to you the level of cynicism and the skepticism that is around in the industry. And we talk about civic engagement. Okay, uh, I'm clear now, second last slide. There is also the issue of not everything is just money. Okay? Uh, how many of you followed the Tesco story last week when the woman actually put in the planning application to bulldoze Sir Terry Leahy's home? Uh, and Sir Terry Leahy said, we did civic engagement, we talked to the community, and everyone loves it, we're creating 2,000 jobs. And the woman said, yes, in shell stacking. So the issue here is not just numbers, it's also the qualitative issues. Just final thoughts. Do not jump on the bandwagon, I never have, because if you run over, okay? Uh, do something that has an impact, and I think, and I do applaud uh, people like Andy Mays, Ben Elliott, who's actually done it. Uh, do something that has an impact, don't just talk about it. Uh, I, I don't think strategic documents help that much, in fact, doing strategy is cheap. I think most importantly, more learning needs to take place. You need to have more basic research working with practice. And also, at the end of the day, the triple bottom line is about people. Thank you very much.